Hi, everyone, and welcome to the regular season finale of the Bison video blog. Along with Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. Apparently, over my shoulder has been a change in the, in the nickel. But that is only because you picked, like, 18 games. It's a matter of time you were going to get at least one on me. You claim you're a great Division I FCS yeah. mind. <laughs> I'm not plugged was into not Butler. Proven, was not proven yeah, last I'm week. I'm not pl plugged into Butler and Drake football. So Kolpak got one back. The lead is four. Heading into the final week. Not as tall a task as it is for Northern Iowa or Illinois State to make the playoffs as for Jeffrey to come back and win the nickel. The Bison wrapping up the regular season in Vermilion, South Dakota, Saturday afternoon against the Coyotes, who come into this game 4-6 and six after a loss in the rivalry game against South Dakota State. We talked about this after our post-game show on Saturday night, what you expect out of USD. This is their senior day. You expect everything in the kitchen sink to be thrown at the Bison on Saturday. Why well, wouldn't you, especially when you have senior day. And we've yeah. seen senior day. It's different when you're out of the playoff picture and your last game's at home. For some reason, it's just sort of a let's win one for the Gipper mentality, I think. And that's what you, you're probably going to see in the I, it, It's a It's been a tough year. They've had some tough losses. Yes. I mean, the, the one to Western Illinois, they had that that's game one. Yep. They had that game one, and it was really, you could just call it like it is. It was, it was a choke. Yeah. They beat Northern Iowa at home, and they beat Illinois State at home, which that might be the two things that hurt those two resumes the most is the loss to South Dakota. I'll look to just go back to what you were talking about. The last three years, the Bison have ended the regular season at home, but the three years prior to that, 2010 was Mo State. We know what happened there. 2011, they won the conference for the first time at Western Illinois, a game where the Leathernecks were out of it. Remember, there was no atmosphere there. Yep. Bison got up. And that was after a loss to Youngstown, won that game. And then 2012 was in normal against Illinois State, where the Redbirds, remember, raced out to a 14-0 lead in that game. And Illinois State had a ton to play for. Yep. They made the playoffs that year, and the Bison roared back and won that game. So these are not, no matter where they are in the standings, it is a lot to your point that these are not slam dunk. The Bison are going to go into Vermillion and take care of business. Of course, and you could say that South Dakota had a tough loss. They lose in their rivalry game yep. at South Dakota State last weekend. But again, these are... These are college football players, yeah. and when it's down to the last game and, and you work all year just to play a guaranteed 11 times a year, you're not going to let this right. slip away, and especially when you have the five-time defending champs, mm -hmm. and we've said it all year, every time every any issue goes anywhere, they get everybody's best shot, and they will this week. Let's talk about the Coyotes, led by a new quarterback. Ryan Sager was the guy who led the Coyotes into Fargo last year and ran all over the Bison defense and won the game. They got another running quarterback, Minnesota transfer and Chris Strebler, who's had, you look at some of his stats in games, they are eye-popping what he's done to some defenses this year. And you look at him, at him physically, six foot two, 225 pounds. Chris Kleiman called him almost a linebacker yeah. mentality in a quarterback position. Great athlete. He can get to the perimeter. He's fast. He's big. I'm not sure about the arm strength. Right. I really haven't seen so much evidence of that. But he's a, he's a player, and if NDSU lets him get away, that could be problems. it could be problems. Trevor Bauma is their outstanding running back who, remember, broke his wrist in the game in Fargo last year, much like Carson Wentz did. But Bauma, before he got hurt, he also ran over the Bison defense. Well, he did and he didn't. I didn't think it was run got, over. But he got loose, though, in a few plays. The Bison had a hard time bringing him down. That's true. But but he's just, uh, yeah, he's, he's had a career where he's been injured a lot. Again, he's a senior, right? Yep. So this may be his last right. hurrah, that, and he'll go down fighting. What do you make of this Coyote team? Bob Nielsen, obviously, in his first year trying to install his system. I think the amount of recruits they got, we won't see them on the field, obviously, until 2017, that things are... I think pointing up in Vermilion. I like Nielsen as a coach. He won in Macomb, which is incredibly hard to do. And I think he's going to win in Vermilion. I do. I believe that. He won in Duluth. He's won yeah. everywhere he's been. Right. So, yeah, he's a, he's a coach with a great resume to to. Vermillion's interesting. They they got a new basketball arena. Right. It just seems like they're getting and kicking in some money more than they ever have in this Division One transition. it would be an interesting matchup on Saturday. For the Bison, they come into this game. Now, Jeff, maybe some of the – the men are starting to get back in. Bruce Anderson will be cleared to practice tonight. We're not sure of his status uh, on Saturday. Brock Robbins looks like he's going to be back on the field. Perkins played a bit on special teams on Saturday. So guys that they were missing throughout the middle and latter part of the year look like they're going to get back into the lineup on and Saturday. And it's really, it's really noticeable on special teams, yeah. like we've said in the last couple of weeks. Special teams is a huge part of it, and the kickoff coverage in the last two weeks – has been nothing short of sensational. Mm -hmm. Now you have Perkins back. I'm not sure if he's in return. That being said, he's out and Shepard returns yeah. one to the house for 84 yards. I think you'll notice it in kick coverage and in kick return teams where when you get those athletes back, you just and you know, guys like Burkadell, we're just saying guys that have been out 
And also, they're all starting to come back. Chris Board's another one. We're not sure about his status on Saturday. It's funny, with Robbins coming back, the Bison have ran for 700 yards combined over the last three games. I'm not sure if they've missed him, but the depth at that spot. And Robbins, I thought, and what the coaching staff said as well, he was getting better up until he broke his foot. But Garrett mallstrom has been noticeable, yep. too, at, at fullback. You need that guy who's 245, to move the 250, pile. the yep. pile pushers, we call yep. him, at fullback. It's a huge weekend. Um, I'm stating the obvious of what's going on, mm -hmm. not just in the Missouri Valley, but nationwide. What grabs your attention heading in? Obviously, we're going to find out tomorrow night is the last unveiling of the playoff rankings. I'm of the mindset, I think the Bison might move up to two. I don't know if, if anybody else will move. I don't know if there's going to be any movement from what we saw last Thursday to tomorrow. And night. I'm of the mindset, if they move up to two, why won't they move up to number one? Right, because I, I look at, that, at the resumes of each team. And when it comes down to it, they're the same. They each have the same number of victories. They each have a win over Power 5 Conference. Yep. Do you really nitpick on which Power 5 win was better over head-to-head? -head? That does not make any sense it to me. It doesn't, but it seems like they might, as you said, I'll use your term, they're overthinking things because I think they really are. And that's if they're, if they're valuing the FBS win more than the head-to-head, -head, that's, that's a head-scratcher to me. I look out also on the national landscape I, I think for my bracketology, I could easily pick 21 teams, bar none they're in. The last three, Jeff, is about as muddled as you and I can maybe remember when we do our show on Saturday night, depending on how some of the results go, because there are a bunch of teams at 6-4, and four, some teams at 7-3, and three, some that don't have all Division I wins. That's going to be really interesting who might get left out on Sunday morning. It's going to be a heads – yeah, you're right. It's going to be a lot of yeah. dissecting for you and I on the bracketology <laughs> show. I'm not confident. I think if we get 1920, <laughs> wow. let's, let's call it All good. Right. Because here's the thing: Illinois State is done in the clubhouse right now. They can't do anything else to help themselves. They're at six and five. Brock Spack, I'm sure, is sweating it out this week. As we sit here Monday, would you put them in the field right now at six and five? They beat Northwestern. I can't say it. I haven't studied it enough for some of these uh, other teams. Here, I'll just say they beat Northwestern. They beat Western Illinois. And, of course, they beat South Dakota State. I would, but as, as we've seen in the last couple of weeks, our criteria, Dom, are not the same <laughs> no, as a playoff criteria. No, absolutely right. So would yeah. I put them in? Yeah, I probably would put them yeah. in. But I, I haven't seen evidence. It's gotten a little more tilted to the strength of schedule. You, with the last revealing of the rankings. Correct, yeah. but it isn't where I would think <laughs> it should be. So I can't say whether the committee will put them in. I would say they won't, but we would. You are of the, you've said, though, the entire time, four teams in the Valley. That's the most that they're going to get this year. Absolutely, and I, maybe that's stretching it too. Maybe it's possibly. Three. I, Western, I think, also has got to be sweating things out right now because after their loss, now they've lost two in a row. Illinois State at Northern Iowa. They wrapped the season on the road at SIU, and even if they win Saturday, I don't know if it's a slam dunk that they get in at seven and four. I don't. Yeah, and what are their quality wins? But then, how do you compare their their <laughs> wins to say a seven and four Montana right, or a, a seven, seven and four, four Weber or a seven and four Cal Poly? That's yeah. that's where it comes down Cal to. Cal Poly's got that South Dakota State right. Win. That's the one maybe the ace in the hole they have is Cal Poly can say, well, we beat the Jackrabbits and that should be enough to get them in. One way or another, it's going to be a fascinating Saturday of scoreboard watching as the Bison take on South Dakota. And obviously, things have got to play out for NDSU. They've got to take care of business to make sure they are a top four seed coming up on Sunday. Huge week of coverage. We'll have our bracketology coming out. We'll have our bubble coming out, our Selection Sunday live blog, all coming up over the next eight days. You better buckle up. we got a lot of work I'm ready. I'm, we've, been a through, we've been through this war yes, before. It's not our first time. For Jeff Colfax, I'm Don Mizzo. We'll see you on Saturday from Vermillion.